when my life is through And the angels ask me to recall The thrill of them all Then I shall tell them I remember You're the one who made my dreams come true a few kisses ago. I remember you. You're the one who said I love you too. I do, didn't you know? Like that, we're gonna have to register that thing. We killed them. Tell it. You were rushing the last eight bars. It sounded just fine to me. I was singing that tune when all you was beating was your mama's pots and pans, and I'm telling you, you were rushing it. She gives me the same line at home. But <laughs> <laughs> well, since you put it like that, you know. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Hello? Tony? Hi, baby. Hi, sweetheart. Can I talk to him, can I? Just a minute, Reggie, please. Are you still coming home tonight, aren't you? Arriving O'Hare at 12.15. But don't wait up, love. You know what the airport's like this time of the year. I miss you, baby. I miss you too, sweetheart. You want to put the big guy on? Yeah, sure. I, I love you, Tony. I love you more. Here. Hi, Tony. Know what? We all wrote these things about what we're thankful for. And I wrote about you and Lynette. The teacher ran into the whole class. When am I going to see you? The second you open your eyes in the morning, OK? Reg, give that lady a big kiss for me. Will you? I tell her to give one to you, too. OK. I love you, man. See you. <sighs> Let me put him to bed till you got here. I've been away for five days and it feels like five months. <laughs> Pretty crazy about you, Tony. He is, huh? Mm hmm How about you? It's pretty crazy about me, too. Oh. Uh. 
Well, that's pretty much it, unless there's something you want to ask me. When does it all become official? Two months. That's the end of the six-month trial period. You go to court, and the judge will issue a formal adoption decree. <laughs> Can I go fly it out front? Just don't go on the street. I'll be right out. Okay. Grab your jacket. Tell me, do you ever feel any regrets? I mean that you didn't choose a baby. Well, did we miss out on a lot of uh, crying and dirty diapers? It's wonderful to see things going so well. I wish I could say that about all my families. Now, Reg is the best thing that ever happened to us. You know, he's really started to open up lately. First couple of months, though, he wouldn't even unpack his things. Well, after all he's been through, it's amazing that he has any trust left. Any more nightmares? Well, not since the first few weeks. It was scary, though. Like, uh, he didn't know who we were. My terrors, they're not uncommon. I must tell you that as well as Reggie's doing right now, he still has a lot of hurt left. I've taken enough of your time. Well, we really do appreciate everything you've done for us, Etta. Yeah. I just wish there was something we could do in return. I'll tell you. Just one look at that child's face is all the reward I need. <laughs> <laughs> you see him, Jim? Oh, boy, I don't think I ever saw Mr. McCurder move so fast. <laughs> One more inch and the glider would have parted his hair. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't throw it. Me too. Here we go. <laughs> whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. First time my grandma brought me here, I asked her if this is what heaven looked like. What'd she say? She said, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's one of them Tyrannosauruses. No, it's not. It's an Alberto source. Yeah, right. You're a goof source. Read it. It's right there. I don't have to read nothing. That's a Tyrannosaurus. You got a problem? What's going on, Reg? Nothing. I was just telling her that that was an Albertosaurus, right? Right. Come on, this place is full of creeps. Look at him, Tony. Albert is so tough, he's not afraid of anything. <laughs> if I had a set of chops like those, I wouldn't be afraid of anything either. You mean you get afraid too? Sure, everybody does. What do you get scared of? I don't know. Sometimes I get scared I'll forget what's really important. You're afraid of that? Why don't you just write it down? Okay, let's go. Asking us to reconsider? Hey, what'd you tell him? I told him we'd have to think about it. There's nothing to think about. We had it for bigger things than being a house band at the Blue Note. Amen. Ah, next year's our year, Tony. I can feel it in my gut. Don't confuse destiny with gas. <laughs> no, 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 I can see it now. Record deal, Paris, Japan, the whole nine yards. Well, we're getting there, that's for sure. Now, I had 20 years of getting that, TC. I'm ready to arrive. <laughs> hey, hey. I've been reading this book on mind power. Uh-oh, get your hip boots on, y'all. Here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> no, for real, the book is all about creating something in your mind that's so powerful that it just busts out and it's real. Can you really do that? Sure, anybody can do it. All you have to do is want it real bad. Well, Alicia. This food sure does look good. Mm -hmm. Ain't nothing but mind power and sweating half a day in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs>
So you're talking Japan and Paris? Reggie and I are never going to see you. We could come with you. Oh, I'm sure your teacher would love that. Well, now, I raised two boys on the road. I don't think either one of them suffered from it. Ed, are you ever going to pass them peas or are you going to eat them all yourself? <laughs> Does Charles still want to be a minister? Hey, the man's father's a saint. Well, you're a lot of sweet things, but a saint, you ain't. <laughs> you want me to cut up your food, baby? I ain't no baby. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> hey, you hear what happened to side man? Oh, Frank all right? He got the money trouble and some collection agency vultures came in and walked off with his piano. Oh. Yeah, yeah, but the good news is he's got a neighbor willing to loan him his upright. All he needs is someone to move it. Hey, if we all pitch in, how hard could it be to move a itty bitty piano up a couple flight of stairs? Come on, lift your side up, TC! Ah! Ah! Hey, man, hey, watch wait, it. wait, 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 my foot's in the way. Hold it, there we go. Let's go. Come on. Lift your hand, Joe. Huh? Damn, lift You guys, man, I can see it now. Musician crushed by piano. Film with 11. Oh, yeah, man, quit joking. Come on, come on, come on. Watch the corner, come on. Come on. Come on. Take it, take it easy, guys. Don't scar the piano. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Hurry up, we won't get in the house until dark the way you go. Hey, who's that deal with this anyway, man? Look at this, we all sweaty and funky. Let's call some professional movers, man. Oh, it's too late, man. It's too late. He's down. It's not going to work. Turn it the other way. Because what they're doing now is pitiful. They need to turn it to the right. See, they hey, can you lift it up down there? They got to turn it to the left. They can't so, take it that way, right. side man. Okay, they got to come go. around this edge. Right, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it. Hold it. It's not going to work. Even if we get it around the corner, we're never going to get it through the doorway. Why don't you just take off the door? Beep 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 Wow. First tree. Mm-hmm. Well, the first Christmas tree sounds like it should be the first Christmas story. Uh, hey. Come over here. Let me lay one on you, my man. Uh oh We got a story. Get on my big self. You leave him alone, side man. <laughs> Did I ever tell you the story about the boy who stole the Christmas goose? Not me. Me neither. Now, this takes place a long time ago. This boy, about your age, lived on a farm with his mother back in North Carolina. Now, he was a good little boy, and he loved all the holidays, loved summer vacations. But when he could smell Christmas coming, he started acting all happy, <laughs> getting happy. <laughs> and he'd have a little smile on his face, everything would be groovy. Well, his mother told him, tomorrow we're going to go get something very special. And special it was, because the next day, his mother dressed him up all warm. They got in their truck, and they went to their neighbor's house and got a Christmas goose. Well, not just a goose, but the biggest, proudest, whitest goose you ever saw. And the boy fell in love with it. So they put him in the back of the truck and took him back to their farm. Now, I'm telling you, this boy and this goose were tight. Understand me? If you saw the goose, you saw the boy. If you saw the boy, you saw the goose. You never saw them separated. Always together, locked in. He combed him, he even named him. Then he found out about a day before Christmas. He was not a Christmas present, but the goose was going to be Christmas dinner. Oh. So what happened? Well, he was awful sad. <laughs> <laughs> he waited till everybody went to sleep, packed his bag, put a little rope around the goose's neck, and they walked into the woods. Did he ever come back? Oh, the boy did. But see, the goose, he took the goose so far into the woods where all the thickets were. Nobody could ever find him, so nobody would ever bother the goose. Well, what happened to the boy? 
He got the tar whipped out of him. <laughs> Did you make believe it up? Oh, no, no, no. That's true. I got the scars to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Is she a beauty, Dad? Best tree on the lot. How about an airplane ride? Ah, we got ourselves a Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. Wow. Where did you get all those? Well, you collect them over the years. You have to be careful, though. Some of these go back to when I was a little girl. Cool. My mother crocheted this for our tree when I was no bigger than you are. It's beautiful. Go ahead. Okay. Three, one, two, three. Here we go. Ah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Now that's the tree Santa's gonna love. Yeah. Mm. Oh no, it's okay. No, I, I can bring it by tonight. Sure. Bye. He's not picking it up? No, he wants me to do it. This guy's been a pain and the derriere from the get. Well, at least this way he can't say he forgot his checkbook when it comes time to pay me. No. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. When death arrives on his swift horse, there is a sharp and bitter pain that no balm can ease. But when it strikes someone as young and vibrant as our beloved Lynette, there is a pain almost too great to bear. Give us strength, dear Lord, to suffer the burden and know that it too shall pass. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a soul. Like me, I once was lost, but now I'm 
I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. That grace appear when first I did believe. What are you doing up? You should have been asleep an hour ago. I heard you down here. I couldn't sleep. Can I sit with you? Yeah. Um, just for a little while, though. We, we've, it's school in the morning. You thinking about Lynette? Yeah, I am. You know the money I saved? I got fifteen dollars. I was gonna buy her some fancy perfume. It's okay. I know how much you loved her. How come she had to die? I wish I had an answer for you, Reggie. She's my second mom I lost, counting my real one. So we got to be extra good to each other. It's just you and me. You're not going to die, are you, Dad? No way. We got too much to do. How about I beam you? Back up to your room. One more minute. Tell me I forgot an appointment? No, no. I was going to call, but I just happened to be in the neighborhood, decided to drop by. You want to come in? Sure. Ah, can you take that? Thanks. Get a lot of shopping. Oh, the boy eats a lot. <laughs> How's Reggie doing? Well, um, it's hard, but <laughs> he's a lot tougher than I am, that's for sure. Tony. I don't want to alarm you, but uh, my superior at Family Services, Esther Clayton, she wants you to come in and talk about Reggie's future. Why? I'm not sure, but my guess is that she wants to know if uh, Lynette's death is going to affect your plans. You mean, do I want to keep Reggie? Uh, look, you can save everybody a lot of trouble at a... Reggie's all I got in the world. And I sure as hell am not about to give him up. I know that has to be your first instinct, but the fact... There are no buts. Nothing's gonna separate us. Nothing.
Come in, Mr. Parks. Sit down, please. Thank you. First, let me offer my condolences. I know how difficult this must be for you. Thanks. Um, now, what's this about Reggie? I wish it were easier, Mr. Parks. I'm so sorry. Come in, Anna. I got stuck at a meeting. Hi. Hi. What are you trying to tell me? Based on my review of the case, I feel I have no choice but to revoke the adoption. Revoke? What are you talking about? Please sit down, Mr. Parks. Let me remind you that your legal custody of Reggie was subject to a six-month trial period. Tragically, that period was cut short. Now, it's my responsibility to decide what's in Reggie's best interest. And I have to be guided by rules and principles, not emotion. I don't believe this. I mean, what is it? The fact that I'm a single parent, or is it because I'm a man? Being a single parent is not the issue, nor is being a man. Then what is the issue? When we approved your adoption of Reggie, it was with the understanding that his home life would have a stable foundation. And frankly, it was your wife who provided that stability. A touring musician is not my idea of the kind of anchor a child needs. This isn't a child. This is Reggie. Don't his feelings count? In all fairness, the boy is absolutely devoted to Mr. Parks, Hester. The attachment is understandable. I don't doubt for a minute that you love the boy, or that he's fond of you. But love is not the only thing he needs right now. Well, that's a damn good start, if you ask me. Have you really thought about what it would be like? Are you ready to prepare three good meals a day for him? Mrs. Clayton... Who's gonna be there when he comes home from school? Who's gonna sew his clothes when they need mending or help him with his homework? How do you plan to do all this while you're bopping around the country? I'll find a way. I'm sorry, but I can't pin that child's future to your good intentions. And I'm not letting you or anyone else take away my son. You got that? I'm sorry, but that's my decision. Miss Lewison will pick Reggie up Wednesday morning, so please have him ready by nine. I want to talk to the supervisor in charge. You just did. Tony says not to worry. It's only for a little while. We'll be home for Christmas. You don't believe it either, do you? Okay, my man, you promised you're gonna go right to sleep. How are you gonna ever get any bigger if you don't get any rest? I was explaining to Molly that everything's gonna be okay. It's just like what Jamal said about making wishes come true. You just gotta concentrate. Right now, I think you better concentrate on sleeping. All right, I'll put her away. Come on, Molly. I was telling her that we'll be together on Christmas, right? That's right. For this Christmas, and the next one, and all the ones after that. Do you remember what Lynette used to say, Reggie? About love being stronger than anything in the world. Except stronger than Alberto. Except Alberto. She really loved you, Reggie. I don't want to leave you, Tony. Not even for a little while. OK. 
Okay, now. Don't worry, this is only temporary. I know. Okay. The Cater Hall is just temporary. Does this mean I get to come back home? We don't know that yet. Come on, sweetheart. I love you. Okay. All right. stealing their food. I didn't steal nothing. I was just saving them for later. You know what happens if you steal around here? They got this dungeon and this eight foot tall dude with a black hood on. And then he like chains you up to the wall and uses you for target practice. Oh yeah? My daddy whipped that sucker upside his head. You ain't got no daddy. Do too. I got adopted. So what you doing back here? I bet they got sick of them and try to get their money back. Shut up. Hey, better watch yourself, kid. Get hip to the program. People just want them cute little babies. Anyway, you too old and ugly. And every day, you just gonna get older and more ugly. I told you, I'm already adopted. My day is coming to get me, you'll see. Your adoption worker's right. They do have broad authority in these cases, but the actual custody of the child is exercised through the court. So what does that mean? Well, file a writ of habeas corpus, and the department would have to bring Reggie in front of a judge and show cause as to why they're refusing to go forward with the adoption, but I don't think I'd advise that. Why not? Because I know the judge that would most likely be hearing the case. And if you lost, there'd be no real recourse. Look, why don't I make a few phone calls? I think right now we'd do better staying within the department. Well, Reggie, it's all set. I take you to your new foster home tomorrow. Reggie, honey. Honey, I know how tough it's been. I do. How long does it take a letter to reach the North Pole? I don't know. Well, with the mail service the way it is, a week, maybe two. Two weeks? But Christmas is in two weeks. I know. Uh-huh. Well, I definitely see your problem. Isn't there a faster way? How about if we send an airmail special delivery? Great. You got it. Isn't it romantic? Music in the night, a dream that can be heard. Isn't it romantic? Moving shadows write the oldest magic word. stay around for the next set. We'll be back in a minute. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. Hey, hey. 
<laughs> What's up, old All right. <laughs> what you doing back in town? I came to see you, fool. <clears throat> uh, who's the lovely lady? The future Mrs. McCray. What? Hey. I guess the ego has landed. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Cora. Cora Duval. It's a pleasure. Dwight said you were wonderful. He should have said oh. incredible. Oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, let's go outside. Hey, it's freezing outside. Just for a minute, fool. Come on, man. I want to get some air. Guys. Mm. I couldn't believe it when I heard about Lynette. And then to take the child away. It's criminal. It's downright criminal, if you ask me. It's a long way from over. I'll tell you that right now. <sighs> now I remember why I left the Windy City. <laughs> <laughs> man, New Orleans has softened you up. Hey, New Orleans has made me a new man. Now I'm telling you, Tony, things are exploding down there. Now I've got, what is it, baby, 30 groups yeah. moving around the country right now and more every day. I'm impressed. I really am. Yeah? Then prove it. Let me manage the band. I don't know, Dwight. We've done all right without a manager so far. Hey, man, don't diss me. Just tell me you'll think about it. Right now, the only thing I can focus in on is getting Reggie back. Did you ever think that maybe they're right? I mean, that maybe the kid actually is better off in another situation? Dwight. You got great things ahead of you, Tony. I just hate to see you blow it. Everybody has the chores to do. We put them up on the refrigerator so nobody can say I forgot. No lollygagging after school. You come right home and do your homework. Now, it's lights out at 8.30 p.m. and church at 8 a.m. on Sunday mornings. Now, that means scrubbed down, dressed, and ready to go at 8 a.m. sharp. You got a suit to wear? No, not with me, but I have a leather jacket that my dad gave me. Well, there's one that Jimmy I grew up probably fit you. And what was I saying? Oh, no bringing home friends without permission and no pets in the house. Like my husband said, children are bad enough. Now, you mess up once and you no TV. You mess up again and you're grounded. Hey, young man, what is the rule about running in this house? Sorry, ma'am. Jimmy, that's Reggie. You're the new kid, huh? Why don't you go introduce Reggie to the other guys? Come on. It might be a little rough for a while. Reggie has been through quite an ordeal. Nothing I haven't seen. All these kids are damaged goods by the time I get them. Well, I'll check back in a few days. Call me if there's anything I can do before then. That's Thursday at 10. What's the guy's name again? Dimitri Cameron. He's agreed to see you without going through the usual bureaucratic rigmarole. Over the phone, he sounds like a real human being, so I think we've got a fighting chance. Oh, that's great. Linda, thanks. I appreciate this. Hey, no, right here, ball. Outlet pass. Tap of the key. Pulls up fire and switch. Nice. Hey. Thanks. Hey, Reggie. How many places you lived in before this? I don't know. I got the record. 22. Noah here second. This place is a lot better than most. Once you get used to it. You just gotta watch it around, old lady. You gotta learn how to sweet talk. It don't matter anyway. I'll be leaving soon. Oh, yeah? Where are you going? I can't tell you. It's between me and Santa Claus. You're kidding, right? You don't really believe there's a Santa Claus, do you? Once I heard him up on the roof, but I had to close my eyes real tight. Otherwise, he wouldn't have left me nothing. Come mm -hmm. on. You really think there's one fat guy and some mutant reindeer who go to every kid's house in the world in one night? He goes light speed. Then tell me how come there's all these wimpy looking Santa's ringing bells all over town? Those are Santa's helpers. You can tell the real Santa, because his beard isn't really white. It's like yellowy. And his eyes, they twinkle like diamonds. Yeah, twinkle, twinkle. So what's Saint Nick bringing you that's going to get you out of here? It's a secret. 
Oh, Holy God. He's no hope. It seems, Mr. Parks, you're on tour a great deal. I'm a musician. It's the only way I can make a living. Actually, your file says that you worked three years for Bancroft and Higgins. Yes, I did, but I would... So, it's not the only way you can earn a living. Oh, forgive me, but uh, if you can hold a job at the one of the largest insurance agencies in the city, then, then there is, in fact, a viable alternative to your current lifestyle. Well, it seems to me it's more a matter of choice. But I'm not an insurance salesman. I'm a musician. No woman in the family could help you out? My friend Alicia Slater has offered to help. But she's in the band also, isn't she? Mr. Parks, I have literally thousands of children to worry about. And my mandate is to protect each and every child to the best of my ability. Now, I really do sympathize with the circumstances you find yourself in, but I see no cause to overrule Mrs. Clayton's decision. Our first obligation is to find that boy a stable home. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that if I get my old job back, you'll let me have Reggie? I didn't say that. But uh, Mrs. Clayton might have a tangible reason to review her decision. I'm sorry you got your hopes up for nothing. Thanks for not saying I told you so. Everything working out? Not so good. Why not so good? Everybody hates me. You gotta give it a chance, Reggie. It takes a while for people to get to know one another. Nobody wants to get to know me. You eating okay? I'm not that hungry usually. What about sleeping? Huh? I wake up early, like five or something. How's school going? Boring. Keeping up with your reading? Nobody agrees with me like Tony did. You seen him? As a matter of fact, I did. This morning. Is he okay? Mm-hmm. He asked about me? Of course he did. He misses you, Reggie. I miss him. And Lynette, too. I know. You mail my letter? What letter? Letter to Santa. Sure I did. Good. Now I'm not worried. Sorry I couldn't give you back your old accounts. Gretchen, it was great you gave me back my old job. Hey, just good business, that's all. This is you. Okay. Okay, now, this will be your territory. Nobody's had a lot of success out there, but if anyone could crack it, I know you can. Well, you've got a lot of cold calling ahead of you, so I better let you dive in. Good luck, Tony. Thanks, Reggie. is not eating or sleeping. In fact, he's showing all the classic symptoms of depression. You're an adoption worker, not a psychologist. Perhaps if you could just see Mr. Parks just over the holidays. That would be completely counterproductive. The child is already working off some idealized view of a fantasy father. To spend Christmas together would simply worsen matters. What's 
going on, bro? Nothing. The old lady's sick of you talking all about that Tony guy all the time. So? She said they took you away because he's unfit to be a father. Shut your face, Gerald. Probably a criminal or something. Shut up! Shut up! Why you Sorry, sir. And I promise nothing like this will ever happen again. Let's go, boys. Mrs. Clayton. I try to stop you. Call security, please. Mr. Parks. You haven't returned any of my calls. I've been extremely busy, and I think I've said about all there is to say. How about the reevaluation? On what grounds? My new job. Here's a letter from my boss. And my pay stub. There, that's proof. Proof of what? With all due respect, Mr. Parks, a week at a new job does not constitute a change in lifestyle. Excuse me? Uh, for some reason, I thought you people were in the adoption business. I'll have you know, in the eight years I've been with the department, we have gone from thousands of kids waiting for adoption to hundreds. But we haven't done it by relaxing our standards. What's that supposed to mean? It means that I'll continue to do what's best for Reggie. I lose my wife, you take away my kid, I give up my music, what the hell else do you want from me? Right now, I'll settle for you leaving my office. This man will show you the way out. Damn it, woman, are you out of your mind? Look, I done told you we can't afford to take out another kid, and you got to find one with an attitude. Look, I've talked to the boy. Now, I've done all that I can do. Look, if he don't straighten up and fly right real soon, he's going to be plenty sorry. trouble is, if they let me get with that Clayton woman, I'd have her off a high horse so fast that she'd have to set a watch back. <laughs> All right, feeding time, y'all. You know, in the old days, it was different. There's no the mumbo jumbo, man. Rules and regulations. I mean, if there was a kid who needed love, you just took him in. Whether it was family or not, just took him in. That's how we got Elijah. So he didn't have no father. Mother, cute little thing, good singer too. Sounded like Billy Holiday. She OD'd the same way, unfortunately. In an alley, man. And then there was the kid. So Loretta said to me, oh, we just can't leave him out here. And it'll only be for a few weeks, she said. <laughs> a few weeks. When he left us, he was 18 years old. He was just as much a son to you as your real kids. As much? Let me tell you something, Tony. There hasn't been a birthday or a holiday of any kind. If that boy doesn't come to see me his arms around me and just says, Dad, I love you. You know, I don't know what it is, but there's something about a child that makes you realize you are not the most important thing in the world. I don't know how it happens now, but damn, it makes you feel good. That's why, Frank, I gotta get Reggie back. Frankly, Tony, I don't know if leaving the band is the answer. The band will be fine without me. Oh, the band will be fine. But how will you be? Let's face it, man. Music is a part of you. It's in your blood. Just like 
that boy is. Find a place for the boy and the music. Come to your senses. If I sold insurance to Doomsday, Morris, she wouldn't give him back. She wants stability from you. Yeah. Be my houseman. Who knows, Tony? Somewhere down the line, you know, partners. Look, I can't ask the band to give up their careers just so that I can stay home. And be your father. You doing something more important, maybe? Huh? Hmm. Besides, Tony, playing the blue note. Ain't exactly the end of your career. Excuse, excuse me, man. Use a touch more basil. Oh, I'll give you a basil. <laughs> Now, if that's where he was headed. You would tell me if he was there. Thanks a lot, Edda. I'm sorry. This whole thing has me so rattled. Do you have any idea where he might have gone? A friend, favorite spot, any place? The Natural History Museum, a zoo, maybe. I'll check a few places. Look, Molly, it's El Grotto. Hot roasted chestnuts. Get your chestnuts, folks, right here. Hot roasted chestnuts. Merry Christmas, folks. Chestnuts, hot roasted chestnuts. How much? For you, my friend, one dollar. Highway robbery. Let's batch out here, my friend. Nice and hot. There you go, one dollar. And that's perfect. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Roasted chestnuts.
with someone? Young man. Wait a moment, young man. Sell them by the pair. How do they work? You got the money? What do I look like? A dead bee? Anna, oh, Nothing, Ada. I checked every place I could think of. Maybe we should call the police. I guess that's next. Call me Tony. Tony? The Smiths just called. They don't want Reggie back. Right now, Esther, that is the least of our worries. It's freezing cold outside, and God knows where that child is. I'd wager your friend Tony knows. Oh, don't be ridiculous. He would have told us. I'll be so sure. I wouldn't trust that man further than a fish can spit. In the meantime, I'm taking this case out of your hands, so you're free to go home. Why? Because I'm convinced you have lost any semblance of objectivity on this one. Well, maybe I have. But it's better than losing sight of what we're really trying to do around here. Oh, and what's that? Getting kids more than just a roof over their heads at three meals a day. We're damn lucky to do that. They need more, Esther. More. You, of all people, should know what a child needs most. shall get them that's not shall lose this is what the Bible says 
And it's still good news Your mama may have Your papa may have But God bless the child That's got his own That's got his own If you got a lot of money You've got a lot of friends Crowding all around your door But when your money is gone All that spending is You'll find your friends Your good friends They don't come around anymore Rich relations they will give you A crust of bread and such They say come on honey help yourself But you better believe you can't take too much Your mama may have Your papa may have But God God has blessed the child that's got his own. God bless the child that's got his own. That one was for you, Reggie, wherever you are. I'm right here, Alicia. Oh, baby, come here, baby. Here. Come here, honey. Oh, we've been looking for you, baby. You okay? This is Clayton. Where's the boy? Where do you think you're going? He's right here. I called Etta. I've taken charge of this case myself. I wasn't going to risk both of you disappearing. We're here, aren't we? Get your things together, Reggie. Can I to stay for the night? Get your things, son. Yes, ma'am. This was your doing, Mr. Parks. That's a lot of bull. I never encouraged Reggie to run away. On the contrary, you have done everything you can to perpetuate this delusion he has that he belongs with you. He's obsessed with the idea. I was his father, damn it. You act like he picked my name out of some phone book. I love that boy. If you truly loved Reggie, the kindest thing you could say is goodbye and mean it. But he had his heart set on seeing me on Christmas. Do I have to go with her, Daddy? Mr. Parks is not your father. Uh, Reg, yeah, you have to go with her, son. Reggie. Reggie. Uh. When will I see you again, Tony? Let's go. But I have to see you for Christmas. That's I enough, know, Reggie. Reggie. Let's go. Daddy! Daddy! It's only temporary. It's a young couple with a baby. Not ideal, but they've got an extra room and he won't have to change schools. I'll take him over this morning. Fine, but I'm still hoping we can find the boy something more permanent. Believe me, so am I. Get me the 
police. Open up this door right of course now. it's an emergency. Mrs. Clayton! Mrs. Clayton, open up! Quiet. Do you realize what time it is? What in God's name do you want? In God's name, I want my son. Coming here in the middle of the night isn't going to help your cause, Mr. Parsh. Mrs. Clayton, if you don't let me... Come in. Come in. I don't want you waking up the whole building. This has got to stop. Both you and Reggie have to get on with your lives. Then let us. We just want to be together. Is that so hard to understand? Mr. Parks, you see these pictures? Each and every one of these youngsters was a foster child once, just like Reggie. And every one of them beat the odds and made something of themselves. Don't you think that's what I want for Reggie? I want him to become everything that he can be. I want him to, to shine like the Christmas star. And I want to be there, Mrs. Clayton. I want to watch him grow up. It's not enough just to see his pictures on a shelf. Let's be honest, shall we? How long do you really expect to stay in that insurance job? I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I quit today, but I, I'm willing to look for other work, whatever it takes. But I thought you could handle that job. To be blunt, Mr. Parks, I don't think you know whether you're coming or going. And that's exactly why I'm not about to entrust Reggie's future to you. Now, please, it's late. I'm not going anywhere until you at least promise me that I can see my son for Christmas. And lead him on to believe he's going back to you? Absolutely not. Now go home. Get out of my way. Stop that. Stop that. Stop it. Hey, oh, okay. Come on. Let baby. me go. Come on. Come on. Let me go. Come on. Let me go. Come on, man. Let my arms go. Mr. Clayton. Mr. Clayton. My children. Pierce does nothing but snipe at the idea for two months. Then, of course, once it's a hit with the old man, he makes like he came up with it. Well, good old Norm. I mean, he never had scruples to slow him down. Oh, could you hand me a clean spoon, hon? Uh, uh, your mom is here. Mom is here. Take my advice, Ricky, and don't go into advertising. The name's Reggie. Reggie? Didn't I say that? Mom is gonna be <laughs> here. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Clayton. Merry Christmas. Oh, Mrs. Clayton, Mrs. Clayton. We got to try, sad man. Explain this, Etta. Uh, uh, this is our doing. Uh, we're Tony's band. Yeah, we're not just his band, we're his friends, too. And his family. And, uh, we've come to ask you to reconsider. There's nothing left to reconsider. Last night proved what an unpredictable father Mr. Parks would make. You mean because he lost his temper there for a moment? Look what the man's gone through. Everybody has their breaking point. I mean, that wasn't really Tony talking like that last night. That's just a man with nothing left to lose. And you slammed the door on his dreams. I'm sorry, but I'm more convinced now than ever that he can't raise that child on his own. But that's what we've got to get you to see. He's not alone. He's got all of us. Absolutely. He's got a family. And we're all crazy about Reggie. We all yeah. pitch in to help. Dragging him out of school so that he can barnstorm the country is not my idea of an education. Let me tell you something. I raised both of my boys on the road. I tutored them every night. One's a doctor in Akron now. And my baby's gonna be a minister. That may be all well and good. I don't see what difference it makes now. Miss Clayton, we all love that boy very, very much. We all love him. And that's the difference. That's right. Right. Yeah. You don't know what it means not to belong. Not to have somebody. I'll thank you not to presume what I know. I was a foster child just like Reggie. So, if it was good enough for you to live without love, then it's going to be okay for Reggie. Is that it? 
I think this discussion has passed the point of being useful. Well, honey, you passed that point a long time ago, didn't you? Uh, let's go before we get frostbite. It's colder inside this woman's heart than it is in that storm out there. You came about this close of making me say humbug. No way. Merry Christmas. Thanks, Dwight. You sure picked a lousy way to start your holiday. Couldn't stop myself. I just went crazy. Hmm. Well, at least you know one thing. The war is over. You lost. Man, if that lady was against you to start with, you just closed the book. I can't even wish him Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. That's a joke. You know where you're spending Christmas Eve? Doesn't much matter. You're coming back to New Orleans with Cora and me. We're leaving this afternoon on this great party train. It's toting a champagne-filled tanker car, live band. What do you say? Maybe I should. Yeah, you're damn right you should. You gotta clean out the system. Get your head together. Have some fun. Here's the whole wrap on the party train. Is it two o'clock? Yeah, first thing we do is get you packed. Then there's some people I want you to meet before we get out of town. And what do you say? I certainly don't want to intrude on your Christmas Eve. Uh, there are a couple of things I'd like to go over. OK, let's go in here. Thank you. Reggie's missing again. Oh, my God. You wouldn't happen to know where we might find him. How would I know? You wouldn't even tell me where you took him. Hi, Santa. Hi. Ladies and gentlemen, the store is now closing. Thank you for shopping with us, and Merry Christmas. Where's Santa? I'm sorry, son. Santa's not seeing any more kids today. He's got too much to do. But I have to see him. Santa, I gotta talk to you. I just got to. Take it easy. Okay, let's go, young man. It's all right, Frank. You sure? Santa, this terrible thing happened. I wrote you this letter, only it never got mailed. Slow down. So then you didn't know my wish and I had to come and tell you what I want. Well, you sure caught it close. I was about to go out and whistle for Rudolph and the guys. What's your name? Reggie. So, Reggie, what's the big request? A space warp blaster? Uh-uh. That tank that spits slime? I want my daddy back. Has he been gone a long time? He and Lynette adopted me, but then she died. They took me away. You have to fix it, Santa. You have to make them get my daddy back. I'm a lot better at mending toys than broken hearts. You can do it. They'll listen to you, Santa. I know they will. Reggie, there's some things that even Santa can't do. 
But you were my best plan, Santa. Reggie, are you here with someone? Uh, no. I mean, yeah. You're not, are you? No. Well, you certainly can't go out in that storm alone. Let's see if we can't get you a ride home. Security, please. Reggie! Thanks, Mrs. Smith. I thought maybe he'd try to contact one of the boys. Thanks. Merry Christmas, Mrs. Clayton. Just walk it.
just make it so my daddy and I are together. And don't let him stop loving me ever. And please, God, take care of him. And don't let any other kid have him. <laughs> Mrs. Clayton. Hello, Angie. How did you know I was here? That's okay. Don't cry. Thank God you're all right. You know, last time I prayed in church, I wasn't that much older than you. That must have been a long time ago. Oh, sorry. No, you're right. It was a very long time ago. What did you pray for? It's kind of a long story. I like stories. Back then, my parents were so poor, they couldn't afford to raise all of us kids, so they sent me and my sister to live with my grandmother in South Carolina. Just till they got on their feet, mind you. Months passed. Years. They never sent for us. Not even when my grandma died. Not even when I went to church and prayed. It, it was like we didn't exist anymore. They got on their feet, all right. And they walked away. Who took care of you? Oh, a lot of folks. Some good, some bad. My sister and I were split up and... I went from one foster home to another. But no matter where I went, I was always alone. Sounds familiar. Is that why you don't pray anymore? And a lot of other reasons. Why don't you give it another shot? There's nothing left to pray for. How about praying for me? You really love him, don't you? Yes, ma'am. And he loves me. Sorry, Reggie. I am so very sorry. Help me find him, will you? There's a blizzard out there. But if Tony and I are together on Christmas, everything's gonna be okay. Hustle. The trains aren't like the airlines. They actually leave on time. Are you okay? Yeah, fine. Look! A cab! I don't believe it! Oh, there wasn't a cab running in all of Chicago. Oh, thank you so much. You know who you look like. 
What's Tony's address? 4936 Cornelia. Right? Right. You already told him? Uh, sort of. Any luck? Now when you're calling hospitals, I don't know what luck is. Well, Jamal struck out at the club. We've been so worried. Where did you find him? There's time for that later. Where's Tony? None of us know. We've got to find him. Have you changed your mind about them spending Christmas together? I've changed my mind about a lot of things. <sighs> he said something about being invited to New Orleans, but I thought he wasn't going. Well, I think we've waited long enough. What are you doing, woman? Uh. Uh. Gotta be something here to tell us where he is. Come on, y'all, look around. A lot of good this does us. We still don't know where he is. Maybe we do. What is that? Train schedule for New Orleans. Two o'clock departure. We're never gonna fit in one taxi. Well, don't look at me. I'm riding shotgun. Thank you. Whew. I called Jamal. He may get there before we do. Union Station and step on it. No. Come on, Cora. We're almost out of here. Let's hustle. We're cutting it a little close. You may not be aware of it, but those are some very important contacts we made this morning. And we got to move. Holiday, Sunliner, from New Orleans, almost two. We're just going to make it. Can't you go any faster? We're already slipping and sliding. Remember the guy, there's a building right down the street from where we live. And uh, my girlfriend told me there was a big... They're working on the phone. They started about a summer month. What she do is no problem. You got the gig. There's another thing. We'll take you back to the room. Let me introduce you. Everything will be great, all right? I have another girlfriend. Her name is Marshall. And I think she's a lot of fun. Hi, how are you? Get me out of here, Ed. Ooh. You're a godsend. Thank you very much. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hey, relax, Tony. This is going to be a Christmas to remember. Come on, step it up, honey. These heels are not made for running in. Look, it's two! What track is it, two o'clock to New Orleans? Track 18, around the corner to your right. Thank you. Track come on, come on, man. Come on!
Clayton. Well, aren't you gonna wish your son a Merry Christmas? Merry Christmas, son. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.